Good morning. Today is Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <sighs> Working on my steps. My little workout for the morning. <sighs> so I title this video, You Are Not, You Are Not, your bad experience or experiences. You are not your bad experience. You are enough. So I'm going to make this a Heal the Hurt podcast. Heal the Hurt podcast. Ooh, let's heal it. Let's heal that wound this morning, today, this afternoon. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, taking a breath, taking some steps. It's so important that we pace ourselves in healing the hurt. That you are not, I am not my ex bad experiences. You know, I am not my learning disabilities. I am not my dyslexia. Dix dyslexia. I am not my. Uh, illness. I am not my problem. I am not my mental illness. I am not my disease. Wow. I am not my fear. I'm not my resentment. I am not my unforgiveness. That's pretty cool, right? Because the gift of forgiveness is about understanding by grace. how even though we may have experienced bad experiences and been labeled uh, negative labels, unhealthy labels, we are not those things. <laughs> not one bit. <clears throat> we are not the prey to the predator. <clears throat> All right. despise what others say and their own trauma and their own bad experience. It's not about jumping over the problem, under the problem, or a bad experience, not jumping over, around, under. It is about processing, processing through the problem, processing through the insecurity, processing through the fear, processing through the resentment, processing through the lies. Oh. Isn't that wonderful? When you process those thoughts and feelings and beliefs, there's such a freedom in that. Processing those thoughts and feelings and beliefs of those bad experiences, of those traumas, of those hurts, of those, hmm, not getting quite the message, not really receiving that message of respect. You have respect. You have respect and forgiveness 
This is a free great gift by grace and love. <sighs> Not because of what somebody else did or somebody else said. <sighs> it's recognizing your own value. Everything that's been contrary to what is good and just and lovely. Whew. You are not the curse. <laughs> You're not any negative experience that you may have experienced. <sighs> you are not the dev your devalues or the devalue the problem ah <sighs> you're not is not that wonderful you are not your bad experience you are enough heal the hurt podcast Whew. today is a brand new day and you when you rise up and or while you were sleeping when you wake up just remember your state of mind. Where is it at right now? <sighs> Take a nice deep breath. Do some exercises. How's your spirit feeling right now? Has your spirit or soul or body been wounded lately? And how are you feeling about that right now? Do you need for somebody to affirm your worth? Because sometimes when we think we are, believe that we are a weakness, we just need somebody else to remind us of our strength. To remind us of our abilities. To remind us of our wisdom. <sighs> The wisdom of the world is not the same as the wisdom of love, healthy love, peace. The wisdom is so different. Wisdom of the world is so different from the wisdom of a healthy love, a healthy state of mind, a peaceful heart, peaceful mind, peaceful soul. Oh, there's so much more you can get from that wisdom and tap into that well of salvation. Tap into that well of grace. Tap into that well of, oh, wow, I am love. It's not an outside job. I don't have to hear this person say it to me or that person say it to me before I truly, truly believe I can do all things. I have self-worth. I am not my problem. I am not my bad experiences. I am not my pain. <laughs> I am who I am. <sighs> No one should question your ability to believe in yourself. That's your strength. Wow. That's your self-respect. Wow. That's your self-acknowledgement. Wow. That's your ability to think, feel, and choose. That's your sense of agency. Powerful. Wow. You are not your bad experience. 
You are not the problem. You are not that bad experience. You are not that hurt. You're not that unforgiveness. You're not that foolish. You know? Young and wise. That's what you are. Whew. You are young and smart. You are young and have self-awareness, self-respect, self-understanding. You understand boundaries. So in those moments when you're feeling hurt, when you're feeling frustrated, when you're feeling your bad experiences are overcoming you, remember your strength. You are enough. Remember your validation. Remember your accomplishments. Think on those things, things that are lovely, pure, right? You are enough. Oh. You have the truth that dwells within you. Therefore, there is no lie in you. You have the understanding that passes all understanding. And when you experience a bad experience, it may be about fear keeping you safe away, out of harm's way. That's okay. It's okay to feel fear. It's okay to feel resentment. Because deep within you, your heart and soul, your body is receiving that well of grace, that well of forgiveness, that well of love. <sighs> and for some of you who don't feel that, it may just need, we may just need some repentance. <laughs> when we believe we got it all figured out, and nobody else needs validation or a word of encouragement. Hmm. We really got to think, if I value, another peep person has value. If I want to seek validation, maybe I can validate that other person in my life. It's okay. This is where the source of natural healing takes place in your spirit and your soul. When you think there's no forgiveness, there's no room for forgiveness. There's no room for understanding. When you feel frustrated, when you feel angry, when you feel like you want to tell people off. That's just worldly wisdom, right? It's okay to have those feelings. It's okay to have those thoughts. You can still use them as learning opportunities. Oof. And when you're feeling frustrated and you're feeling afraid and you're feeling like nobody understands, Remember, it's not an outside job. It's a work within, within your heart and soul. Whew. 
tap into that love, tap into that peace, tap into that joy, tap into that self, uh, self-awareness, self-compassion, self-knowledge, acknowledge yourself, it's okay. You may not be exactly like your neighbor who does everything right, who speaks in the right term, right timing. That's okay. When it comes to self-trust and self-accountability, accountability, it's about knowing your worth. Recognize your own worth. You know? We wouldn't be busy. We wouldn't be so busy wondering whether a neighbor likes us or not if we just took time for ourselves, process our thought life. And that's important. That's valuable. Process your words. You, your voice matters. It has value. Your voice has value. Uh, process everything about yourself and express. Self of agency is about thinking, feeling, and choosing. So whatever you're feeling, it's okay. You can let it out, you know? Have you ever gone for a, a walk on a very cold day and all you want to do is let all that stuff inside of you that could turn into a flu-like symptom or that could turn into congestion and even other things with the heart, with the heart and the lungs interrupting your breathing? Take a nice deep breath. If you feel like you're going, you know you're going to be plugged up the next day, let it out of your system. And for most men, they know what that means. Just spit it out. Just make sure it's not on somebody's feet, right? <laughs> or somebody's sweater, somebody else's stuff. Just make sure you just let it all out. Yeah. And for women, you can do that as well. <laughs> Just let it all out before that congestive congestion takes place in your body. Before, let it out. Some people do that in the bathroom. Well, being in the bathroom, privacy, right? And a moment of privacy. Most people like to have that private moment to do those things. Right? Oof. You just let it out. Be the queen that you are to be. It's okay. Sovereign queen or, or sovereign king. Treat yourself with kindness. Kindness. It's okay. It's okay to let out all that stuff out of your system out of your body, out of your physiology. Let it out. Blow your nose. <laughs> if you have to cough it through your mouth, do that too. But make sure you're in a good place to do that. If you can't do it outside, do it in the washroom. Do it in the bath. Do it while showering. Wherever you can do it in those moments, at least once a day, just let it all out. Let out whatever is not good in your system. If you feel like a congestive period is coming into your body. Could be summer, could be winter, could be spring, could be autumn. Right? Whatever, whenever you feel something, some negative energy in your body, let it out. Just let it out. <sighs> You want to breathe better? <laughs> oh, that's okay. 
he wants room and space to breathe, that's okay. However, remember, when you need healing, you want to hurt, heal the hurt. You feel coming, pain coming to your body. Let it out. All right? And for some ladies, some people may say, well, there's never an appropriate time to do that. Yes, there is. Make time. Yeah. Make time for yourself. It's okay. <sighs> and as you heal the hurt, you'll find yourself, wow, why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> Some people, they get so busy acquiescing, following this project, working on that project, that they kind of forget about, not because of a mental illness, they kind of get so preoccupied and busy that they got to get in tune with their body health. A little workout helps you with that. A shower, a bath helps you with that. Letting go of all that negative energy. <sighs> right? I'm just saying. I'm just sharing what works for me. And I don't know if it was a year ago. Somebody was saying, write yourself a love letter. Try it. Yeah, you're right. How many of us want to write out letters that are about the hurt? How many of us write letters about healing the hurt? Right? Healing the hurt letters. <sighs> Let's heal the hurt. No more lies. No more pretentious beliefs through biased beliefs. As soon as we see something as a lie, oh, I see you lie. You can go on your way now. I'm just receiving the truth. Bye-bye, lie, and welcome truth. You let in that truth, <clears throat> a lie from a long time ago, a seed of doubt someone when it may have put on you from feeling insecure, overwhelmed, whatever their excuse was at the time. You can take the time to heal from that. Heal from that lie. It could have been you were gaslit. Look up the definition of gaslighting. You'd be like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I went through. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Oh my G-O-D. All respect. All due respect to God who created us. You know, when we say all the praise, all the glory to God, you you do remember you do when you sing that song try focusing shifting your focus on god being way far away because it's an inside job right remember that peace that love the fruit of the spirit is within you that you are not your bad experiences you are enough. You are enough. You know, when you seek for validation from others or respect from others or love from others, from others, really, really think that through. When was the last time I gave that person a hug, a real hug? When was the last time that I took time to say to that person, I love you. You matter to me. You are precious to me. I don't know if I've said this to you lately, but I truly, truly love you. And if it's a personal thing, you can look in the mirror, do some mirror work, and speak words of love to yourself. Healthy love, you know? 
Release that tension in the soul and the body. Release it. Any tension, any hurt, any bad experience. Whew, just release it. Oh my gosh. I did not I did not realize I was hanging on to that until I took the time to breathe and process my thoughts, process my feelings, and connecting to the my authentic, my authenticity, who I truly am. Oh, wow. It's not what I about what I do, but it's really about reflecting uh, about who I truly am. I have worth. I have self-esteem. I have self-value. <sighs> wow. I have been given a spirit of love, power, and of sound mind. Wow. That is a true gift of forgiveness right there. Wow. Oof. Let those cobwebs of lies leave your thought life. Leave your thought life. The lies, let them leave you. It's okay. <sighs> let the bitterness leave you. The physio and your phys in your spirit, soul, and physiology, your body, your neurology. Let that leave you. What would happen if I didn't think? What would I happen if I didn't think I was so unforgiving that I hung on to that lie just because I wanted to prove to them one day I'll prove to them that was a lie. It's okay. It's okay that you hung on to it. Maybe it served a purpose for that moment. But now you can say, I'm letting it go. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And I'm releasing that now. <sighs> and look within your own heart and soul and really search for the good, the forgiveness, the truth. <sighs> you see how that's creating a great energy? That's your energy from within. That's your love from within. That's your forgiveness from within. Whew. As you shake off those lies, like, wow, I feel so much lighter now. Oh, that spirit of heaviness is, whoop, just left me. For where there is light, darkness cannot abide. Where there is truth, lies cannot abide. Oh, wow. Tap into your self-esteem. That's something from within. Tap into your self-health, love. It's about healing. It's about your health. It's about connecting to that healthy connection. Truly, truly your authentic self. Letting go of what is not authentic. Letting go of what seems to be a thought, of obsessive thought. No, look within and let those thoughts go. What would I be thinking? What would happen if I didn't think I was obsessive? Hmm. What would happen if I didn't have that thought? Is it true? Am I really obsessive? Is it true? Is it true? If you still believe in your heart and soul that it's true, write it down. When was the last time you felt obsessive? When was the time before that? Last three, five, five times to five times before that. Write it down. And, whew, that would be part of a fear, right? Fear base, fe building up resentment. What's wrong with me, right? That resentment where we call ourselves out on something 
we have no control over. So the hurt, the cognitive dissonance, the gaslighting of another, whether they were aware of it or not. And we received that as truth from somebody we trusted or somebody in our family trusted. Holy, that was a lie, a lie from the pit of hell. I, re I just renounce that right now. Yeah, some people you say rebuke. Some people don't like the word rebuke. It sounds kind of mean and abusive and offensive and bullyish kind of. But really, gaslighting is all about insecurity, cultish, jealousy, unhealthy. I've never heard of such a thing as healthy jealousy. I may be wrong. Whew. Healthy insecurity. I may be wrong. Healthy unforgiveness. I may be wrong. Oh, wow. Whew. I'm not all-knowing, but I know someone who is. Sometimes I'm not always my best friend, but I know someone who is. And that matters. Whew. So I am not my bad experience. Can you believe that? I am not my addiction. Wow. I am not my fantasy. Awesome. I am not my nightmare. Cool. Right? And what do we do when we find ourselves saying, my fear, my bad experience, my hurt, my feeling not good enough, my rejection, my anxiety, my inadequacies, my imperfections? What are we doing when we're doing that? We're kind of tell, sending a message to the body, physiology. You know, something bad's going to happen, and you're going to let it happen because you deserve it. Wow. That's not a job from within. That's a job from fantasy land. We got to let that go. It's up to you. You want to keep feeling unforgiving and I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm abusive. Maybe I'm a narcissistic person. I just don't know. Now, think about it. If you're doing the work within, if you decide to shift that and do the work within and stop building so much anger every day, wanting to rage out at people, innocent people, does that feel good to you? <sighs> Raging out on yourself, does that feel good to you? Huh. Wow. Let it go. Let it go. Whew. Of course, I'm doing some self-esteem work here on my own. <sighs> and I'm sharing it. Why? Because I'm putting it out there. I'm clarifying things that may be that somebody else may be experiencing right now. A sense of being bullied. A sense of being lied to. A sense of, I need to file a complaint here. I need to tell other people how to do their jobs. Right? A sense of uh, power, power tripping. Needing to tell other people what to do instead of just looking within and stop push putting our convictions on other people, our own irresponsibility on other people. And when we do the work within, we stop the blame game. <laughs> we stop the shame game. We stop it, or at least pause. <sighs> right? Oof. That's pretty important to take time to pause. You are not your bad experience. You are enough. Heal the hurt today. Oof. Heal the hurt. Heal the wound. Heal your wounded soul. 
if you believe your soul is wounded. Heal your broken heart if you believe your broken your heart is broken by another person, by another group of people, by another person in your life or individual. Become your own individual. It's okay. You can let go of that abuser's hand if you want to. Be grow and become your own person. <sighs> so you can make room to be the mother that you want to be. So you can make room to be the friend that you want to be. So you can be make room to release release that bad energy that you may have felt at one time or another through your bad experiences Whew. or experience. Let it go. You do know that violence begets violence. Abuse begets abuse. Uh, hate begets hate. We all know this. Whew. So how about we try something positive? Let the light in. Allow the light in our spirit and soul. The truth. Make room for the truth in your life. Make room for healthy thoughts and belief in your life. Why? Because you deserve it. The who? You. The what? The healing process. The when? From the hurt that you've passed, hurt that you've experienced. Whew. The when? In the past or in the present. The how? Right? The who, what, where, and when, and how. Where? In your spirit, in your soul, in your body. The how? Through things from the past. People who felt on love and traumatized who never who, now I'm not saying never, who perhaps at one time finally realized to let go of that unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is destructive. Unforgiveness c keeps you bound to that abuse, to that violence, to that mental block from truly, truly receiving your healing. If you have children, your children deserve a better mother or, mother or father. If you have a spouse, well, your spouse deserves a better friend, right? Be that one who will heal, who will stop lying, who will stop making up stuff just so to get attention. Be the one that's mature and allow other people to grow. If you see someone that needs validation, it's okay to validate them. If you notice someone needs a, a shoulder to cry on, it's okay to offer your shoulder, but remember, Heal the Hurt podcast is about you. You are priority number one, priority number two, priority number three. Make yourself emotionally available for yourself, spiritually available for yourself, mentally available and self-awareness about yourself, where your strengths are. Understand, you may have imperfections, but you also have things about you that are good. You may have weaknesses, but there are things about you that is strong and str 
you have great coping skills, let's say. Uh, you may have flaws, but there are parts of you that are just so beautiful, right? Tap into that self-love, you know? If that list of pros and cons about yourself, when you write yourself a love letter, there's more cons and pros, you need to work on heal the hurt. Heal the hurt for yourself. Heal the hurt through self-validation, through self-acknowledgement, to recognize your value, your worth, your negotiables. When you make a negotiation with somebody at work, it's usually about helping the client. But you hope someday, if you ever feel down and out, or feel down, down in your spirit and your soul, you want somebody to have your back and pick them up. Even though you may not live in the same house, you want that person to support you emotionally. If they weren't available for you emotionally back in the day, maybe they can learn how to be emotionally available for themselves. All right? And that's okay. We don't need to control whether somebody prays for us or not. We don't need to treat them like puppets and muppets. Because most people, if you look in the mirror, are like you. They're human beings with flaws and perfections, some strength. But no one person is all powerful, right? Forgiveness is a power tool too. Powerful, healthy tool, though. Mm -hmm. When you look within and you find love, that's a powerful, healthy tool. And getting rid of the negative energy in your life and making room for positive energy, that's okay. Really, really okay. Oh, I'm enjoying my walk this morning, doing some stretches. <laughs> I had a fall yesterday. I, I did a plank right, right on my face, on my right cheek, my cheekbone. I thought it cracked. So there was, I don't know, many x-rays taken from the front of my face, side of my face. My chin up, and I could, my neck was in pain. Chin up all the way as high as I could for the x-rays. Then laying down on some kind of rolled pillow that you use when you do exercises. <laughs> like, oh my God, you're going to have me lay down on this? On the back of my shoulders, letting my shoulders down. My neck felt so out of place because I had to let my head down in order for the x-rays, for the x-ray board. <laughs> It was not comfortable. It was really uncomfortable because it had happened after my fall. <sighs> and I kept thinking, pride becomes before a fall. <laughs> it will destroy you. In the Bible where it says that, pride comes before a fall. And I think, I don't know. <sighs> What's the opposite of pride? Humbleness? <sighs> What's the opposite of pride? Empathy? <laughs> so I'm thinking in my thoughts. I couldn't get up for like two to five minutes. Somebody wanted to call the ambulance. I said, no, no, I'm good. I just went over uh, uh, a hump. You know, those, uh, those little humps in front of the parking lot for, for speed bumps. So it just looked like a flat yellow line. But the part that I went to step into, which was about a foot long, that's the one that had the, the bump. And I didn't see it because <laughs> I was looking through the whole line. It was flat on the ground along with the cement. And then I said, oh, and, oh, oh, God. But I, I was walking so fast to get somewhere. <laughs> I got excited. Anyways. I felt flat, crash, bang, crash. Ooh. 
And I kept thinking, pride comes before a fall. Was I being prideful? Lord, let me open my eyes. You know? I was enjoying my walk. I haven't enjoyed a walk like that in a long time where normal speed. <laughs> I was just feeling like, wow. For the first time since an emergency three and a half years ago, September 2019, I'm actually walking on my feet and my back is straight. My shoulders are down. I'm enjoying my walk. Yay. Thank you, God. Thank you. <laughs> Lord of God in mercy. You know, singing his praises. <laughs> and bang. <sighs> my whole body weight that ended up going on my body from for, from the first six months to ten months. Well, for the first six months after my surgery, I put on that extra 75 pounds. So when I crashed down on my face, it was all that weight. And then I started remembering every time I fell before and before and before. You know, the time before that was about seven years ago. I just fell and I called it a Balboa moment, rocky, rocky Balboa moment because I fell f on my directly on my lips. I I didn't even chip a tooth, but there was this like grain on the, on the inside of my bottom lip that's still there. <laughs> I never mentioned that when I went to the hospital for x-rays today because my main focus was to do the x-rays for my face, back of my neck. Whew. Not today, yesterday. <laughs> but yeah. Because today is Wednesday. Wow, time flies. Yeah. Whew. So it was quite the experience. Quite the experience. And I, I ended up getting my daughter's help to get to the hospital. <laughs> One of my daughters that was nearby. She took time off of work to bring me to the hospital. Went back to work and worked that extra time at work because <laughs> like I said we all come from <laughs> workaholic families but also with great ethics right that's really counts for something we're good with our word that's called integrity we follow through <sighs> oof and that's what creates healthy relationship, good experiences. Whew. As we follow through on our promises, our friends follow through on their promises, it makes for healthy relationships. That you really can talk about anything to your friend, to your partner, to your children, your parents Oof. and be real and honest be direct and still be polite right oh. still remembering our own internal boundaries as we respect external boundaries you know staying within the guidelines of respect dignity Right? And self respect, self dignity, and self love, which is the opposite of narcissism, abuse, unhealthy love. Right? Ooh. <sighs> that walk is doing me some. So, anyways, when I, th I thought I cracked my uh, cheekbone. Turns out it's just a big bruise. <laughs> it's probably going to be within an hour or two just purple and lumpy. But I did manage to get an ice pack where I had my fall and started writing an incident report 
Oof. I had to store where it happened. <sighs> and I have their card. So I'll just order in the rec medical records for for yesterday. Later on today. So I can forward it to that store manager for his incident report along with the picture. And I will also have my copy for myself. Oof. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, to do the right paperwork because incident reports are really important to fill out when somebody's hurt. Heal the hurt podcast. We just don't pretend and deny it didn't happen. <laughs> Like, uh, realistically, it did happen. It wasn't imagined. <laughs> you know, somebody offered to call an ambulance. I said, no, no, no. Just give me two to five minutes. I just, if I get up too fast, I'm going to feel uh, really dizzy. So I want to make sure I can breathe okay, get up. When I'm ready to get up, I'll get on my knees. And then, because I'm good with weight bearing still, so you know sometimes when people are affected with dizzy spells it's really hard with the weight bearing right and that's why people use wheelchairs uh what do you call those things walkers or canes right because of the dizziness it just helps the people to keep balance <sighs> yeah so that day when somebody offered me to go do lifts and transfers for other people, I know how to do the job. I know how to do that type of work. However, because of my slow recovery process in my body health, it's been a, it's a slow healing journey process. Uh, somebody offered me a job to work at this place and you'd be in the bus for an hour there, an hour back. I says, no, 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 no. Because in my younger years, I used to take the bus and it wasn't about telling people they shouldn't do that job. It was just <sighs> at my age with my health issues, you know, and a little bit of background with my atonic dystrophy. <laughs> it's just like, Nope, no thank you. And the other person on the line just got so upset with me. She was like reprimanding me and berating me and issuing her orders, which came out as gaslighty. And it's like, whoa, wow. You know, all I can do is say, God, I hope you. Whoever she meets in her life today is that you that she can see that tap into your grace and tap into your what she needs for her life because you know her you know every person you know every soul <laughs> you know just I'm putting in a good word for her she's going through a hard time she's struggling yelling at this person so I explained to her do you realize you're talking. To somebody who's 60 years old, who's been struggling for the past three and a half years with just moving her toes and her, her fingers, <laughs> doing neck exercise just to move the top part of her vertebrae, who couldn't sit or stand for up to 10 months after an emergency surgery. Do you understand you're talking with somebody who's struggling with her own physical health issues? And of course, connecting to her own self-awareness thing. I wanted to tell her that. However, she was so upset. She goes, well, if you don't take that job, and then some more berating, it's like, holy, that woman needs healing. She's hurt. She's really hurt. <sighs> and I asked her, "Do you have you ever done that kind of work? No, I haven't, but you have, and you're going to do this. Uh, I'm sorry, but no thank you. 
<laughs> I can't even lift myself or transfer myself from the bed to a chair, from a chair to a bed for about a year, up to a year after the surgery, September 2019. End of July was the first time that I started walking two blocks away from my physiotherapy. I still could not extend my hands. I had two frozen shoulders, could barely do any movements, but I follow through on these sheets, physiotherapy sheets, to do the work. I mean, just moving my feet, not even moving them up and down like I am right now, just moving my toes or my fingers was a real struggle. I end up with a lot of inflammation on my body, but I've adjusted to it. So today when I went for my walk, but it was very gradual, it was an instant. That's why I have these videos recording myself doing these exercise that I'm not imagining that I am doing the work. It's not, it's not as fast speed as I expect it to be emotionally, mentally, you know, physically, but a little result here and a little result there. That's, that's good energy. That's me building up that good energy and healing my own hurt, my own pain, releasing that tension in the body. And the more I do that, the less, yes, I have loose skin, not from being old. Loose skin frame came from loose muscles, from hardly any movement for about a year. But I started gradually, two times, 15 to uh, 40 visits from end of July to Dece mid-December, two visits a week of 15 minutes of exercise two visits a week, just to get my mo body moving. <sighs> but before I ended up at physio, all I was doing is wearing this long shirt. <sighs> I couldn't even brush, reach my hair to brush my hair. So now I can do that again. It's really gradual. Some healing is gradual. It's not instant. So I can say I'm a woman, a virtuous woman, with tenacity and willpower from a place of love and self-respect, honoring myself. Yes, I did fall, through, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, from having a burst, a bet, miss, uh, a burst appendix at the age of 57, and that's okay. It happened. I can't undo what was what happened. It happened. But I also am learning about limits and boundaries for myself. When somebody's busy berating me, <laughs> reprimanding me, and probably seeing me as a puppet or a muppet or, or enabler or <laughs> a doormat or less than, uh, what do you call that? Inferior to them? It's like, wow. You know, I just realize, oh, I need to pray for that person's healing. Instead of doing what I think she did to me, or believe she did to me, by criticizing me, it felt like a sense of condemnation. You know, it's like, all right. Romans 8 1 says, there is therefore not no condemnation to those who believe, right? Who call on the name. Jesus, you know, without sounding over religious, some people say, How can somebody speak to God? That must be a possession of some kind. No. You read the Word, you read the Bible, that's God speaking to you through His Word, <laughs> speaking to others through His Word. The Bible was written by people that were inspired by the Spirit of God, right? When you write your own letter, love letter, it's inspired by your spirit that God gave you. <laughs> you know? Oof. So if religion sounds awkward to some people, they may have experienced a lot of bad experiences. And they're not their bad experience. 
and they need to let it out and that's okay so i found out through watching through listening to some podcasts about the vow yeah it's just like oh my goodness and how many times has happened before through documentaries that I studied about different sex, sex, S E C T S groups. And you think to yourself, well, I would never, I would know better. But guess what? <laughs> if you've been gaslit, if you've been mistreated, if I've been mistreated or gaslit or lied to, well, obviously, I did not know better, right? That's a real discernment. That's why it's important to remember the gift of forgiveness is a free gift. The gift of grace is a free gift. The gift of his grace of forgiveness is a free gift. <sighs> Like have our eyes open, our hearts open, our souls open, our spiritual eyes, spiritual ears. Have discernment, right? When somebody else needs us with something, let go of what you think is going to win God over because you already won, right? Just remember that. The work is the work within. <sighs> hmm. Let me see if I reach 10,000 steps. Oh, yes, I did. All right, guys, have a great day today. Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023. And I will put in the list of fears and resentment and the uh right here i'm going to circle it even right here enjoy your day ciao for now <laughs>